Welcome to part two of Lichtenberg Figures 101, the Loss Manual. Today we're going to be teaching you techniques, tips, tricks, and completing a finished product. So stick around and let's go for it. Okay, so this is the project we're gonna to do today. It will be a jewelry display stand. As you can see, I've already drilled holes for the hooks. There's a, a hole drilled up here for the mirror. So the first step is to sand the, the piece very thoroughly. I start at 80 grit and then go through the grits, 80, 120, 240, uh, 500, 800, 1000, 1500. And my final um, fix up, polish up at the end will be with 2000 grit. This will give a high level of finish and it'll look great. So we're starting here at 180. And just give it all just a quick sand, keeping a good swirling action so as not to leave any marks or lines. So that's fine. That's 180 done. Between coats or between sandings, get yourself a microfiber cloth and Get rid of all the sawdust and the fine grits left over from the previous grit, which was 180. So that's good. Give that a shake out. Now we go to 240. Same deal. Just a light sand. This has beautiful grain, this camphor laurel. Now the reason we're sanding this to this degree is for two reasons. One is it allows the electricity to go through the grain and give you a better burn. But more importantly, at the end, when you have all those fine tree-like, branch-like, uh, figures going through your wood, when you put your final finish on, you don't have to sand as aggressively and therefore you don't lose any of that fine detail. So we're just going to go through our grits now, 500, 800, 1000 and 1500 and then we'll go over and burn. So just before we get started with the burn, let's touch on some safety from the other um, episode. One get rid of all jewellery that has metal, etc. in it. Take all metal off your, your person, including your belt. I'm not stripping in front of you guys. I'm just getting rid of that buckle. I don't want the electricity to go through the wood. I touch it, wham, I'm fried. So that's the first part. The second part, we'll need our Honeywell gloves to protect us. Here we are, we're standing on rubber matting. We've got our rubber mat back here. We're good to go. So the first thing you did after you prepared your timber, ready, sanded through to 1500 grits to allow the electricity to flow through better and also to um, help with your finish on the end when all those little fine figures are in your timber, um, you won't sand them out and the finish will look great. So, first thing first, as we said in the first episode, get yourself some bicarb soda and a squirt bottle. Ratio is two tablespoons of the uh, bicarb soda to one litre or a quart of, I use warm water. In this case, I've already made this mixture up. So now we're started. First thing we'll do is we'll just wet down the surface of this unit piece of camphor laurel where we're going to burn. Just a small area to start with because it will dry out so you're going to have to do it again. Now the key to this is let the water soak in because if you leave it wet how it is at the moment, I hope you can see that, the, the 
current will only run through the water, it won't run through the current. So what we need it to do is well and truly soak in all the little grains, etc., and then we'll get the electricity flowing the way we want it. Well, not exactly the way we want it, the way it wants to go. So we'll let that settle for a while and we'll come back in a minute. Just brush away some of this excess. Work piece. One, need, one thing I need to say prior to starting is never squirt the work when the electrodes are on or you're fried. You, and we don't want that. Secondly, once you've finished using this, because it's steel, get rid of it. Okay, we'll turn it on. It's on. Put my gloves on. I'm ready, Doctor. Okay, we're set to go. First electrode, second electrode. We have our foot pressed down here. Put your... If you're right here next to me, something's wrong. And we're off and burning. Is it now we're done? So what I'm doing at the moment, because this particular unit that I'm doing, or project I'm doing, has predetermined holes for the hooks. I'm just burning within those parameters. I am getting, I hope you can see this, because I'm getting some really fine detail just through here, these hair-like figures here. Looks awesome. Go to another hole, and I'll stay in that same hole. Now we're getting it going. Always make sure you're in a well ventilated area because this smoke comes off and I'll pull shake you. It's not the best thing to swallow. Raising light, see it all bright. You will never ride back to life. Apologize. Too soon to say I'm fine. Too soon to say I'm fine. Oh, I don't know what to say. To do how to make you see. You'll notice I move the electrodes around a lot. The reason I'm doing that is to keep up with the moisture as certain areas dry out, like down here. I tend to want to stay where the moisture is. Here we go. Get another nice burn happening out of that hole. So there's some really fine figures that are coming up. Later on, I'll put a, a macro lens on and get you some nice fine details. That just joined up with that one. So now, what's happening with this particular technique is the two have joined up and you should be able to see on the camera a real red glow. So what that's doing is making quite a deep crevice or channel whatever you want to call it. Okay, we'll turn that over. We'll move to our next one that's got some moisture. And into that hole. So I'm getting quite a good burn, and the reason I'm getting a good fine burn with lots of hair-like fractal patterns, we'll call them, the, the wrong word. Um, is because I sanded to 1500 grit. Most people don't tell you that, but believe me, having experimented with this over the last 18 months, two years, whatever it's been, I can tell you that that's the best way to get a good burn. Look at these patterns. Get 
too close to the top edge up here because I've got a camera sitting in just here and I don't need it arcing out and ruining the camera. that I'm not doing a full blown burn like most of these guys do with their microwave transformers and all those other dangerous things. Because I'm using this for a project, I want fine patterns to go along with the look of the jewellery. So I'm pretty well going to call it a day here and whip this down again. After doing the burn, it's time to get rid of all the char out of it. The fine detail. Only rinsing all the carbon out. Okay, so now the uh, the workpiece is quite dry after our scrub down. We've got rid of all the carbon residue. Now it's time to, as I said earlier, uh, we'll sand now 1000 grit and 1500 grit. Then we'll go to um, our finish and finish off with 2000 grit at the end. So we'll give this a light sand. Now obviously you could use a sander, but I don't think it's necessary on this particular piece of work. We just wanting to smooth everything out. And in between coats, out with their microfiber. Pull the residue out of the cracks. So that's very smooth now. And now we go to our 1500. As I said before, just give it a quick vacuum. Just to pull those bits of sawdust out of the fine cracks. So I noticed there's some moisture still in some of the little areas in here, through here, and a couple of other little points just there. So we'll give that a dry off with a heat gun, not getting it too close. Safe and sorry, and just dry it out as much as we can. So, as I said, we'll uh, start to make our finish now, which is one quarter white shellac or shellac and um, three quarters uh, uh, methylated spirits. Handy little uh, pro tip these are Choya Umi um, alcohol bottles, they're great, they have a, a lid that allows you to um, 
dispense your uh, your liquid when it's finished. Keep through the top. Not, a, not my, the best look for me. Ah, we got it. Okay, three quarters of that. We're not making a great deal at the moment. And just a shake. Use this particular one a lot. Uh, we'll put about a quarter in. Okay, it's got that on with the lid. Good shake. Now we utilise this rag. Just fold it up, and we'll make like a French polishes rag. And we'll do a rub finish. So let's start. Oh, look at that. Coming up straight away. So just like sanding, just do it in a circular motion. Now you could use a camel hair brush, but I find the rubbing's a lot better. You don't get those streaks in the, um, coming out of the cracks. So I much prefer doing a rub finish. And the great thing about this finish is it dries basically instantaneously. Okay, we'll let that coat dry. We'll come back and give it a light sand and then give it another coat. In about two or three minutes and the finish is now dry, I've got a new piece of um, 1000 grit sandpaper and I've got my Rotex rotary sander and Okay, so we'll put it on the random um, setting there. We'll put this down and we'll... Now, find ourselves a new part of this cloth. Rotate it over and do the procedure again. Give our liquid a shake. On with the cloth. And look at that pop. Yes. It's awesome. 1500 grit sander. It's going to apply a traditional wax polish now. Nothing special with this. Okay. Right, tightening it around, coating it well and truly, and then we'll give it about 10 minutes to dry. And then we'll polish it off. Um, polishing pad, it's been used many times. Put it on the bottom of my... Well, you should feel that. That feels beautiful. So, prior to putting the hooks and the mirror on, that's what we've achieved. As you can see, it's good fun. And I wish you all the success in the future doing it. We're gonna have lots more projects, uh, making incense stands, candle holders, 
etc. All with the Lichtenberg pattern. So subscribe and um, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.